Can I hear a hell yeah? Hell yeah. All right. Let's bring out Julia. Do you want it in the stand? Well, good evening, Denver. I'm so excited to talk to you about one of my favorite topics. I want to take you back to the first days of school. Think about how much hope you had. Think about how excited you were. Maybe you don't remember the details, but you're going to remember that very first day and how full of promise it was. We know that elementary school teachers are saints. They do everything. They give love. They give hugs. They give candy. They even clean up bodily fluids. That's why I teach high school. <laughs> but you know also that in elementary school, you learn the rules. You learn the rules of social interaction. You learn about the playground. And you learn sort of rules of games, but also how we interact with each other. And folks start to form groups. They start to form a social hierarchy. And pretty soon, school looks a little different. People start to put their heads down. People start in middle school to feel like school maybe isn't a place for them. They start to feel like maybe they don't belong. And in high school, this gets even worse. We know that almost two-thirds of some ninth grade classes do not make it to graduation in some places. So we know that something is not working, and it's up to us to try to figure out what we can do to bring back the love of learning. When I was young, this is how you learned. Check out that computer. Does that look familiar to anyone? Check out that card catalog. Check out those world book encyclopedias. That is how we got information. Social media was getting on that phone, or it was looking at the media in Seventeen magazine. That's what it was. And I would call my friends on the party line, and we would vibe together for hours, and it was amazing. But things are so much different. Now this is the way that folks connect with one another. This is the way that my students access information. There is always a chat going on, during class even sometimes, about what's happening during class. There's a back channel conversation on social media. So that's when we have to deal with expectation versus reality. A lot of kids go into high school thinking it's gonna be like this. They think that high school is gonna be like High School Musical. And for a lot of folks in Berkeley or in Boulder, it is. But for some folks, it's not. It's all about testing. It's all about how you can prove yourself. It's all about the scores. In Montbello, where I teach, we have to deal with that a lot. This is my classroom. Not now, but a few years ago. This is my actual classroom. The desks were in rows, and I felt a lot of comfort in setting things up in a way that was the way that I learned. I wanted to be the teacher that I wished I had. But we got rid of the rows, and we changed things. The whole school changed things so that my classroom now looks a little bit more like this. And changing the setup of the classroom, the physical space and the power dynamics in that room forced me to focus more on autonomy, on purpose, and giving my students a sense of control and power over their learning that helps them to feel like they can master the content, which leads to a sense of confidence. This is my class today. Some of these folks are here in the audience. And they sat in a group, and they had fierce battles about poetry. They were able to have a conversation that I just listened to and observed, and then live tweeted. So I was sitting, listening to my students, and live tweeting their conversation. I did set them up with an anthology. I did give them a few poems to look at. I did talk about cultural relevance, but they did most of the work, which allowed them to take control over their learning. It allowed them to know what it is to love learning again, because I was not the keeper of the knowledge. They were the keepers of the knowledge, sharing it with each other, and it was so powerful. I learned so much from them, and that's where the flame gets passed. When the teacher can become the student and the student can become the teacher, we learn that we can all get free. That's the only way, when we can let go of the need for our teachers to be the experts. And here we have graduates of Montbello High School. I would love for you all to clap for them, please. These kids are graduates of DCIS at Montbello. My school, DCIS at Montbello, there are so many things that would keep these kids from graduating, but we know that love is a verb, education is liberation. I educate for liberation, and that's how I show love. And it works. 
We know that when we show the kids we love them, when we share power with them, when we allow them to take ownership over what they're learning, then they feel this sense of strength and freedom, and there's nothing like it. And that's all I have to say.